Good morning. Welcome to another episode of Xa Talk Show. Ah, the video, the screen, the video capture device is really not working well. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about a few things. <laughs> Pop up a chat. I haven't done a video chat yesterday because I was thinking, for example, I was thinking today we're gonna talk about the uh, geometric inversion. Okay, we haven't talked about math for a while, so I was thinking of doing a math session. And this is, this geometric inversion is one of the most spectacular thing uh, in, in math. Okay, let's pop it out, pop it out. Uh, and uh, and let me find another page. St stereographic projection. Oh my my God! My neighbors is like they are blowing the grass, the blowing the dead leaves on the street. So it is making huge noises. Now I believe this speaker. This headphone headset is a uh, directional headset, so you don't hear it. But act, but however, my voice becomes very much reduced. Anyway, here's a hold on a second stereographic projection. I want to uh, show you the other links. Stereographic projection and physical models. And let's go to uh, Wikipedia. Okay, let's see how many people are watching. Zero. Okay, but anyway, I was going to. I'm thinking of talk, doing a talk on geometric inversion, and this is one of the most spectacular. Um, the noise is very bad outside. So let me go turn off. Let me close the window. So um, geometric inversion, this is most fascinating uh, uh, topic in geometry and you can and and it also relates to so geometric inversion also relates to uh, Mobius transformation, complex analysis. Let's go to Mobius transformation. So you can see Wikipedia. By the way, Wikipedia, uh, if you want to search something math related, go to Wikipedia. Never use the Wolfram uh, math world, okay? The Wolfram math world uh, person is not a good guy. Uh, let's go to, hold on a second, let me show you. So move, uh, here is a math world, wolfram.com which is from uh, we, uh, from Mathematica, Wolfram Research. Now, if you are uh, doing anything math related, I mean, if you are looking uh, studying math or looking up uh, information about math, always uh, use Wikipedia, okay? It's far more better than the content quality and correctness is far more better than the math world, Wolfram math world. And also because the Wolfram, Math world. I have a personal story with a guy, Winston Eric. Okay, Eric Winston guy. He's uh, not. Uh, w well, we we had issues. Okay, so this well, this is back then. You know, back then, nineteen ninety seven. Okay, 90, 1997 to 2000s. There is no Wikipedia yet. So woof. Uh, the math world. It wasn't known as math world. It 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 was not a Wolfram Research uh, project. It was actually Eric Eric uh, Weinstein's. It's called uh, 
Eric Weinstein's Treasure Trove, Treasure Trove of Math. Uh, that's a name. That's his own personal project. You know, pretty much like the way I do things, like the way I uh, write about math. Everything I learned, for example, this um, this visual dictionary of plane curves. You know, so and he he does math. You know, covers all all sort of things on math. Uh, hold on a second. Let me go back to the. Uh, where's that page? Um, oh, here. So anyway, anyway, this is uh, this is Eric Weinstein's treasure trove of math. Now he sold it to CRC Press. He kind of made a contract, you know. There's the details. Uh, it, it's on, you know, originally it's a website, but he made a contract deal with CRC Press. Now CRC Press is known for publishing engineering or math-related, you know, uh, books. So he made that deal, and so it's published in print. It's then it's renamed Encyclopedia of of uh, uh, math, something like that, Encyc encyclopedic dictionary of math, something like that. Then, then he's he uh, he joined Wufan Research, and he sold. Uh, basically, the the project became a Wufan Research project. So, and it's renamed Math World, uh, Wufan Math World. Okay, but anyway, it's it's pretty much a single guy's work. And he was a uh, astronomist. I think he that's that was his uh, training. He was he was a Ph PhD in astronomics or or uh, uh, you know I'm not sure PhD yet. But anyway, he he was a uh, astronomist. So anyway, so he wrote this project. You know, uh, Eric Weinstein Treasure Trove of Math. It's immensely popular. You know, remember this is back in nineteen. 1998, 1990, uh, around 1998, and my website is also immensely popular because you know back then you know you don't have Wikipedia, uh, and basically the nerd, the web is the popular pages are our, uh, nerd who who you know seriously write up some uh, subject, and so it's you know it's his own website. Then he made a deal with CRC Press, so there's a, a printed version. But meanwhile, I think you know he he made a deal so that it's also online. But however, part of the uh, project becomes offline. I, I mean, like like you have to pass a paywall or something like that. Only part of it is shown. Then he joined Wufan Research, I, I think be, well, be, mostly because of the, his uh, math encyclopedia project. Uh, he, you know, he got a job at Wufan Research and he joined. And this, this uh, his encyclopedia then becomes a Wufan Research project. And uh, Wufan Research, of course, then everything becomes available again. You know, so CRC Press is not happy because you know it's a commercial publication. They made a deal, so they sued, um, and back then it was a uh, big news, you know, around the web. And most people's opinion is that you know you should, you know, you should be free, like info should be free, and so on. You know, the open source people. But a deal is a deal, you know. It it must be according to law. Law. So anyway, that was the uh, history of the math math world Wufan. That is a history, okay, that's that's one thing. Th that's um, that's one thing. Now the other thing I, I want to talk about is that I had a, a personal problem or a quarrel with this guy, Eric Weinstein, okay. Originally we are friends because we are the pioneers of the web, you know, and we both love math. So I write a lot of math. He he write a lot of math, and uh, and my web uh, my my math website is basically the most popular is uh, was this one. It still is this one, not uh, you know a visual dictionary of of special plane curves. So in his math encyclopedia, 
there are like 20 pages links to my plane curves website you know for example when you go to an article on conic sections or parabola or any other uh, plane curves such as uh, logarithmic spiral any of these uh, plane curves then he has a link or reference you know like you know reference link to uh, Li Xa, you know, uh, visual, visual Dictionary of Spatial Plane Curves. So we were friends, you know, we exchanged emails, uh, a, f a few emails. Then, then he made a deal, he sold to CRC Press, okay, it's on Amazon. Then I'm, I made a criticism of it. Let's go to Amazon. hi guys so I got two people watching so uh, if you are watching say hi you know say hi and comment or opinions uh, so uh, uh, so let me show you CRC inside inside ENC YCLO PEDIA of math okay let me show you the book the book now today is obsolete but of course, but I believe you can still find it. Yeah, here <laughs> it sells for six hundred now. <laughs> you know, uh, but this book is long obsolete. You know, back in two thousand, see two thousand two. Okay, here. So CRC Concise Encyclopedia of Math. Actually, you know. Anyway, let me talk about one thing at a time. So I covered the history of you know Wu Fan Math World. Uh, then I'm going to talk about the personal quarrel between me and that guy. So he he sold his uh, encyclopedia to CRC, you know, press. So published this book, and back then it also comes with a CD. Uh, you know, so the online version is on the CD. You can you know access it by a computer if you like. Uh, then I made a comment negative review uh, I believe you can still find it but uh, you know this this is like 20 years ago okay so let's see uh, see all 25 reviews Search for Xa, not there. Uh, search for Glut, not there. Okay, so uh, let me let me just um, let's do a web search. Uh, I'm pretty sure we can find it. Xa Li. And I have written an essay about the story as well. So. Yeah, that that you'll find it there. Uh, printed citations. So let's see uh, over here. There it is. Somehow it's. Uh, not shown not shown on the other page so this is back in 1999 I said you know I made a negative review one person's work are very limited as an encyclopedia so here's what I said you know this book is quite impressive as a personal note but does not deserve to be considered as anything formal as being a dictionary or encyclopedia the information are way too idiosyncratic and contains too many factual errors, omissions, and misleadings. I strongly advise you not to buy this first edition. As of 1999, the definitive math encyclopedia in English is still Encyclopedic Dictionary of Mathematics, published by MIT Press. Unfortunately, uh, that encyclopedia is written for mathematicians and is not up to date. It was translated from Japanese in 1997, 1977. Okay, so it is quite hopeless for such massive work as this to be up to date. 
the encyclopedia gives an a the MIT encyclopedia gives a very dense outline and definitions of almost all modern math areas. Each section is written by an expert in that area. If you have an, an undergraduate degree in math, buy the MIT uh, uh, encyclopedia. If your math interest is recreational, then Eric's can be enjoyable. So I made this review, and uh, you know it's it's rather negative. And since then, you know he saw this, of course. <laughs> since then, we became enemies. He start he removed, you know, this Eric Weinstein guy removed all links from his encyclopedia to my to my website. However, on my website, I also have links to his encyclopedia. Okay, I I did not remove it because. Um, you know, uh, you know, as a manner of speaking, I do not uh, think this behavior is professional. You know, you write the encyclopedia, I'm free to uh, criticize it, okay? I I'm free to give my review of it. And uh, so my review is negative, and he, he saw that, so he became, uh, he, he stopped being a friend, we, he became an enemy. In fact, he removed all links to my website. That's bad. So you know he. So this is a story of me and him. The the issues. Okay. So I I do not think he's a good person. Now let me talk about the other the other subject about the quality of the Wufan word. Okay, uh, encyclopedia. The Wufan word or his you know Eric Weinstein's uh, encyclopedia. The quality is very bad. It's in fact it's extremely bad. Okay. Uh, it, it it is nowhere. It's not an encyclopedia. It's not even a dictionary level. Uh, now, for example, notice uh, you know. Let me let's and it's full of errors. He's he, because you know partly because he's not a mathematician at all. I mean, even even if you are a professional mathematician, writing a encyclopedia of math is a lifetime's work, and you cannot. Unless you are, you know, one of the top mathematicians, you cannot do it because there are so many areas in math. You know, even back in two thousand, year two thousand or year nineteen, ninety nine. Okay. You 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 need to be one of the top, you know, uh, accomplished mathematician, and you need to spend, you know, more than ten years to actually write a, you know, so called encyclopedia of math or even a dictionary. Because the the topic is just too many, too broad. You know, you, you know, a mathematician. I I think uh, Oyster uh, Oren, uh, something like that. Uh, a well-known mathematician said that to know all math is actually more difficult than learning all the world's languages, including dead languages. You know, because that that's how diversified math has become. So anyway, you you cannot write an encyclopedia. You cannot even begin. Unless you are like you are a professional mathematician, meaning that you, you know, professional, you, you know, like among mathematicians, you publish, you know, math uh, all the time, and you are well known, you know, uh, recognized, accomplished mathematician. So you can, so but, so his encyclopedia is very bad. So what what is it? I mean, how? I mean, what? How good it is? So just at what level it is? Basically, he's like. He's like me, okay. We, uh, you know, we are interest. We are nerds, okay. He's kind of very much a nerd. So we do, you know, we learn math and we learn things every day and we write it down. Whenever we learn something and we we write it down. Especially back back in nineteen nineties, I was very much into recreational, what's so called recreational math, uh, which means re recreational math is any math that. Uh, do not require a uh, sophisticated knowledge of math to understand or to appreciate such uh, for example elementary number theory uh, basic you know uh, many things about geometry dissectional geometry combinatorics uh, you know there are, there are many things like put pu and puzzles uh, rubik cubes for example uh, magic squares you know there are quite a lot, you know, topics that's recreational math. 
By the way, recreational math does not mean it's easy or trivial. No, it's, in fact, many of the most difficult and unsolved problems in math, you know, are, are the recreational math kind of math. But what it just it just means that it's math that does it does not require you know many years of study of math to actually appreciate or understand what the problem is about, you know. Uh, most math problems you 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 need like you know five years study of math to to even to understand what the problem is saying. Uh, so so anyway, so he is very he and me uh, are very much. I am very much interested in recreational math back then in 1990s. So I read, you know, a whole ton, tons of it every day. And he is pretty much the same thing because I see his work, you know, it's it's pretty much the books I've read, he has read. The book he references, you know, I have read, you know, because and the topics he covers are all kind of like re recreational stuff. So I can understand the way how he's his you know treasure trove of math works because just like me you know he read a book he saw something interesting he write it down and most most of them are recreational in nature uh, it's not formal math it's not professional math okay by the way what are some examples of professional math usually they are like dry and you know like topology topics in topology uh, topics in uh, uh, analysis or you know like that uh, uh, and so so anyway so so his his treasure trove of math is you know basically notes I mean it's still good you know it's it's useful it's enjoyable to read but it's nothing it's nothing like a professional math uh, and it's full of errors, full of er errors, and, and and also the writing style is nothing close to a professional quality. Okay, for example, we we just run into this Mobius transformation page. Okay, he he gives you know three sentences description. Now, if you look at um, Wikipedia, now Wikipedia, the the math stuff on Wikipedia is truly professional. You can see, uh, you know, it's like how many pages? One, two, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. You know, like forty pages just on these single topics, uh, and also, also the writing style, the depth, the breadth is is far beyond. You know, I mean, compare these three sentences compared to this uh, Wikipedia version. You can see forty pages you know half page versus 40 pages you can see the major at least the uh, uh, quantitative difference you know there's not much information here and also as a mathematician uh, you know by the way Mobius transformation is not um, it's not too advanced I mean if you have studied com complex analysis you basically understand what what it means uh, so uh, what I'm saying about that. Um, so, so anyway, so, so you can see the writing style and the the quality and and quantity is you know just there's an immense difference. So what I'm saying is that uh, the you know math world, Wufan math world, or Eric's treasure trove is not anything close to a uh, encyclopedia. And 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 most. And often it's misleading. It's it's just wrong, completely wrong. Okay, this began. Okay, so so he started this project back in nineteen nineties. Okay, nineteen ninety seven or so. You know, just as personal notes. You know, writing down stuff. And he sold to CRC. You know, CRC tries to you know publish it as some kind of encyclopedia. Then I criticized. You know, no, this is not encyclopedia at all. Then he sold it to Wufan Research, and he joined Wufan Research, you know, to work for them. You know, what? Why does Wufan Research um, take this project? Now I don't know the details because I haven't been working at Wufan uh, when he when this happened. I was at Wufan in 1995, um, uh, but I I suppose you know back you know Wufan 
is also one of the pioneer of the web. You know, Wufan Wufan Mathematica is is one of the pioneers of com, uh, computer software. Uh, you know, it's it's you know it's well known among especially hip you know programmers or people online. You know, internet one of the first. Uh, so so Wufan, I would you know it's it is my guess they would be interested because they would sell Mathematica because he also uh, uses Mathematica. So when you have a you know encyclopedia of math host, hosted by Wufan Research and with lots of links to Wufan Research products you know the notebooks that generates um, you know uh, this this um, subject it benefits Wufan so I suppose that that is why um, Wufan take it to be you know uh, part of the Wufan project so anyway so uh, you see, Wufan Math World built with Mathematica technology, the web's most extensive mathematics resource. <laughs> it's far from it. Uh, so anyway, all this, you know. So he joined into uh, he joined Wufan Research, and this happened back in 1999 or something like that. Okay, around there. So what has been uh, what has happened after 20 years? <laughs> it turns out nothing. Uh, I mean, there's no progress. There's like almost no progress of this uh, Wufan Math World project. You know, in the early uh, 2000s, okay, in the early 2000s, for example, like in 2003 or 2004, when Wikipedia began, you know, back then, you know, there's a concept where, you know, the, 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 um, the swarm intelligence you know <laughs> basically you you don't respect you know authority or or phd anymore instead of you want to like all the people on the internet create some project like wikipedia like wikipedia you know like wiki where you know that's the idea that 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 idea is thriving so so back around 2003 or you know in the early 2000s the math world also tried to do that so they tried to you know uh, they tried to make it a open uh, project so that any people can like contribute uh, for example then some people started to contribute but minor like very few like uh, real mathematicians they started to uh, contribute some of the article but on the whole it's very small you know, and after that, after a couple of you know few years of that, uh, that stopped. You know, so so the Wufan math world became stagnant. You know, ever since. Uh, let me show you some example where they, um, for example, where other people contributed. For example, if you look uh, up any topics that's advanced math, as I mentioned, for example, topology. You know, if you look up any uh, math subject that does not have any aspect of recreational math, then you start to see, you know, there's no entry in, in the math world. But there are some entries that are added by uh, professional mathematicians, other people. For example, let's say, let's see algebraic topology, okay? Um, let's see order topology now these are subjects that's <laughs> fairly advanced i mean like, like formal uh, kind of mainstream mathematician professional mathematicians do not recreational math okay but now if you look at them i bet it's written by other people there's a guy named todd something who contributed a lot so for example so this this uh, subject algebraic topology um Okay, so this one is still uh, credited to him. Uh, algebraic topology is a study of intrinsic qualitative aspects of spatial uh, spatial object. You know that's that's bullshit. Uh, that's you know so so this shows you know look if you read this you can see you can begin to see he's not a mathematician at all. But however, he 
the way he writes things like introduce some topics to the lay person you know so for example programmers okay you don't know nothing about math and you you know he, he um you find it kind of easy to read uh but it's not professional math at all okay for example this one order topology now you know uh so you know it's not written by him so it's it's this uh burly Magathia contributed you know back then when the uh when when math world is open to uh people's contribution so anyway so what i'm so so for the first few years in two, early 2000s math world tried to get people to contribute and that didn't really happen then um then basically it's just stopped any progress it remains it remains back in like year 2000s um but you know but because it's associated with wolfram research and you know basically i you know i if i make a guess there's not much much traffic to uh, wolfram math world at all and also <laughs> uh you know stephen wolfram the guy who created mathematica i i don't think he's uh he and I, I, he knew this for sure i mean he 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 would know that the quality of math world is extremely poor you know it's it's like it's laughable okay it's it to to say it's a math resource is kind of laughable rather it is a uh, math educational ma material. Okay, the Wufan Math World. You can say it's a kind of like an educational uh, website. You know, for high school students, for people who are studying math, undergraduate. Uh, you know, pretty much. You know, same thing with my project. You know, a special dictionary of plane curves. It's it's educational material. It's not uh it's not uh professional math okay you would not call it a, a, a professional math textbook or anything close to a professional encyclopedia so that is the story of wolfram math world okay so um You know, this is this this is like a bullshit algebraic topology. I mean, you compare if you um, oh yeah, and I, this is not even written by him. This one is written by uh, actually it looks like it's written by this guy, uh, this guy, because <laughs> the area guy he's not you know he doesn't know uh, you know um, uh, real math. Okay, so uh, what else? So yeah, contributors. For example, if we look at contributors, I remember there's a guy whose name is Todd who has contributed a lot. Uh, I think this guy, yeah. <laughs> you see 377 articles, yep. Roland Todd. Um, yeah you see so from what i can see this subject you know uh these subjects he contributed now these are subjects where professional math mathematicians subjects okay none of these are um you, you know vast majority of these are not something like recreational math um you know so what what is recreational math like if you are a programmer basically all math you know is recreational math this <laughs> you know so that's a difference that's a big difference between programmers concept of math you know then then the real math mathematician programmer think oh you know okay i got four person watching so say hi say something here so what uh, okay so that covers the history i mean basically that covers you know subject we were talking about the subject of wolfram math world Okay, what is the next subject? Uh, so next subject, um, plane curves. Yeah, so this is my plane curve printed citations. Uh, 
yeah that is the that uh, let's see close this page close this page okay so I was talking about so I was talk talking about we are I'm, I, I was thinking of doing a um, tutorial about stereographic projection and Mobius transformation uh, and uh, wait they don't have graphics here now Mobius transformation is a fascinating su subject it's really one of the most beautiful so I was thinking of doing a, a and here is a, a stereographic projection uh, by this mathematician Henry Sigerman I, I know him kind of Sigerman Henry Sigerman he's a uh, English uh, person from UK originally then he studied uh, graduate or postgraduate in USA and he taught in Australia for a, a couple of years I believe he is in the University of Texas uh, right now but anyway he he create creates lots of recreational math stuff but however he's a professional mathematician so you see here's a so what these things uh, this thing actually illustrates illustrates a uh, um, stereographic projection so what is stereographic projection it's like this okay you have a sphere uh, you put it on a, a tabletop okay then from the top of the sphere you draw lines okay to the floor so any point on the floor corresponds a, a, to a point on the sphere now remember that any any point on the floor co corresponds to a point on a sphere and vice versa any point on a sphere correspond to a point on the floor except the, the North Pole the North Pole on the sphere don't have any corresponding point so anyway so this way this way of associating points on a sphere and on the floor is called stereographic projection now that's actually a stupid name but anyway uh, that's just uh, how it, it is named we are not going to go to history of it you know the naming of things the history of jargons usually is very uh, convoluted and they are not logical I mean when you when you see the word stereographic you think of you know stereograms right like something 3d but <laughs> that's not the case uh, it, it's it should be a better name would be something like spherical uh, projection something like that but anyway so this is what stereographic projection is now the interesting question is so so since now every point on the floor corresponds to a point on a ball on the ball then that means if you have any any figure such as a square on the floor you can also have the uh, figure on the sphere so a square on the floor on uh, on the on the sphere would look something like that but so anyway so any picture on the floor has a image on the sphere and similarly any any image on the sphere have a uh, corresponding image you know on the floor so this is interesting because now you can just put any photo on the floor for example a photo of yourself and see what it looks like on the sphere or you can have some pattern on the sphere and see what it looks like on the floor so so he this guy created this actual uh, 3d printed thing you know this actual actual uh, thing that if you shine a light from the top it it becomes you know you can see the image of it so you can see you, you can see an image uh, of it on the uh, sorry that was my roommate so you, you, you can see an image of it um, you know you so this is a demonstration of stereographic projection it's pretty fun you know you actually uh, shine a light uh, and see the shadow so he made uh, several of these uh, 
you know objects it's really beautiful and uh, the shape of the object shows you that you know a certain you know image on a sphere how they come out on the floor so if you want you know a honey 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 comb pattern on the floor this is what you need to do for the uh, pattern on the sphere and in a similar way I wrote this um, I wrote this in Mathematica. I, I show you, uh, by the way, he's got a video. So I show you here. Stereographic projection. Um, this is a Mathematica uh, application. I mean, a um, Wufan research Mathematica uh, written in Wufan language. So if you start with this pattern on the floor, this is what you get on the sphere and in the same way if you uh, want this pattern you start with this pattern on the floor you get this uh, shape on the sphere and uh, here's other examples uh, so uh, that's stereographic projection Uh, so what's the point about this? So you might be wondering, so what, you know, okay, it, it seems interesting, what's the point? Uh, in fact, this, this, I mean, um, this is very much, this is one of the advanced professional math. You know, we, we are showing, I mean, it, it um, we are showing the interesting aspect of it. But actually, what you have just learned is actually a very fundamental part of, of math called um, uh, very fundamental part of complex analysis. And in fact, this sphere we would call a Riemann sphere. Uh, you know, in in um, in professional math, the term is Riemann sphere. For example. And, and also it relates to Mobius transformation and it also relates to uh, geometric inversion. Uh, so, you know, actually uh, quite a lot, very highly advanced mathematics are related to it. Also a complex projective plane. Uh, yeah, so let me show you. So, uh, R-E-A-M-A-N sphere. So here is a Wikipedia article on Riemann sphere. Uh, you can see um, and here you can see a Mobius transformation. Oh, the image is down too small. Okay, so well, I was going to uh, go into the detail, like teach you some math about how all these are connected. The geometric inversion, the uh, com complex function 1 over z, the Riemann sphere, and how they tie to uh, uh, you know, stereographic projection, and how they tie to um, uh, all these things are tied together. Um, so here's a geometric inversion. Um, so the issue right now is like what are we going to cover? Because today we already talked about it's already uh, 40 minutes. Oh, hey Peter. What is your opinion on category theory as opposed to class theory in OOP? Okay, let's talk about that. So I think about math, that's it for today. Unless some of, you know, if you ask me questions, you know, if you say, hey, I want to listen, you know, I want to, so what is, you know, geometric inversion, how they relate? If you are interested in that, just say it in the comments. Because when I have comments, I get, you know, I get, um, 
I get uh, my talk becomes smooth, you know, because the, because there's a goal, there's an answer, you know. Someone asks that I want to answer that, then I become in in living, you know, uh, I become alive, and I, I can talk about it, go into detail about this or that, you know. I get excited teaching you, you know. That's what I enjoy, you know, talking about things I know. Um, but otherwise, it's kind of you know I'm going around things I don't know you know, you know like <laughs> three people are watching you know I'm not sure what's you know uh, so anyway so okay so yeah so if you you know want to uh, hear some topic just ask ask for me for uh, for it you know so the question now the question is uh, what's your opinion on category theory as opposed to class theory <laughs> the bottom line is. I don't like category. I don't have. I don't have high opinion on category theory at all. I. I well, actually, I cannot say I'm really qualified to give that opinion. So you know, take it as whatever you know, as grain of salt. Now, I don't like the reason I don't like category theory because you know it's, among you know, like I I talked about this thing a lot in in my past videos. A lot of uh, math things known to programmers are like pop things. They are not real math. Or I mean, they okay, yeah. Well, category theory is very is actually real math. In in fact, it's very uh, uh, very advanced foundational math. Okay, but what I'm saying is that you know, you know, there's a magazine called Pop Mechanics. There's also a magazine called Pop science and there's also a mag magazine called pop psychology let me show you uh you know so there, there are these magazines popular science and uh let me show you another okay um Pop Mechanics magazine. Now th these are you know uh, you know this these are you know th if you are a programmer I mean if you are not engineer if you are not a mechanical engineer you don't have a PhD or, or undergraduate in mechanical engineer you find I mean these are you know uh, layman oriented very interesting you know over the years they show for example today's um, uh, today's um, you know this this one is back back in what year 1970s or 1938 okay you know they show this high-tech trend 1938 so today I mean the the magazine I'm not sure they are still in print but they have online versions okay popular mechanics you know they would show oh uh, quantum mechan uh, quantum computers okay they're gonna show you a picture of or 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 how we gonna go to Mars you know some kind of fancy interstellar engine you know we're going to go to Mars things like that they are pop you know popular I'm I'm using that word as a, a derogatory sense okay because if you are a real mechanical engineer. You look at the you look at these. They are not. I mean, they. You know, it's like, yeah, it's you know, it's like you know, it's like scantily. You know, it's like popcorn. You know, you know, it's like pong. Okay, it's like they are not really teaching you. You know, the very anything interesting or um, the the serious stuff. I mean, if you study mechanical engineering, even. For a mundane thing like make a skyscraper, build a skyscraper, build a bridge, what are the concerns? You know what? What math? You know what? What are the constraints? How do you build a bridge? Like you don't know. I don't know. Okay, we don't know nothing about it. But however, we see these you know pop mechanics. Oh, we in, we love it. You know we enjoy it. Like you know the most powerful. So what is sex with machines? You know. So, so that is what I, so so that is what I mean. So similarly, there's this uh, science, uh, this pop science, you know. 
for non non scientist, you get you are attracted. You you know you read it avidly. Oh wow, so interesting. Ma, ma, you know nano nano uh nano machines. You know, <laughs> uh, you know all all these interesting things. But for a real scientist, this is bullshit. You know this this is. It's like a movie. You know, it's just for entertainment. So in the same way, if you are a programmer. The the things you hear about uh, the 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 any math subject coming out of programmers day and night they are they are kind of like these pop things like you know nothing about a subject but okay for example category theory is one of the big example coming out from a, a programmer's mouth all day by the way I I don't mean to um, you know, it's a valid question. Okay, I, you know, I and and I don't uh, mean nothing negative about <laughs> you, Peter, or any any person. Okay, but I mean, I, I'm talking about the phenomenon of the you know, of the of people, the population. You know, who don't know a particular particular subject, but you have these celebrities or whatever. You know, they uh, do. You know. And it's natural too. I mean, because for me, for example, I'm a programmer. Okay, I know some math. Okay, uh, I'm an amateur. You might you might say amateur mathematician, but I don't know anything about mechanical engineering, or you know, uh, or uh, much of other sciences. So you know, I also find you know the pop mechanics is very fascinating. You know, then I learned oh nano nano. Uh, you know, <laughs> nano machines or whatever. So, um, so yeah. So what I'm saying is that you know, uh, category theory is one of the math subject that came out of the programmer's mouth all the time. Uh, that annoys me uh, because I, I, you know, in general, I'm very uh, much. I dislike all these pop things. I mean, what what I'm thinking is that. It is true. Okay, pop. I mean, they are fun and they are entertaining and they are they are kind of educational. Like when you read, you know, if you are a kid, you read pop mechanics. Then in if the, then you become a mechanical engineer. You know that you know that pushes you to become a mechanical engineer. Like when I was young, young, there's also a Omni magazine. Okay, which talks about science and UFO and you know things like that. Uh, by the way, Omni is defunct. So you have this Omni magazine. You know, I I read it when I was young, and uh, you know I in, I enjoyed it very much. You know, about hacking, computing technology. You know, but but they are not real uh, serious uh, science or math or computer programming you know if you read this uh, you know so if you so so what i'm saying is that i i i like the idea where uh, hardcore stuff you know if you want to study math you really you know you really need to like study the most boring fundamentals the, the abstract algebra Analysis, basic analysis, okay, things like that. At least you know. So, for example, for people who asking, you know, for programmers, they talk about category theory. You you ask them, do you know analysis? Do you know abstract algebra? You know that that like these two are the the ABCs of mathematicians. Okay, you have to. It's like you have to know that. Otherwise, you don't know math at all. You you have no idea what is math is about. So, so programmers, most programmers, they they want to talk about category theory, especially from the Haskell people. Okay, they want to talk about the category theory. They want to say, oh, yeah, category theory, they help you, you know, think functional, whatever, you know. They 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 churn out some math jargons, but these people, they don't know what is a group theory. Okay, like they they don't they they have no idea what is a group theory. It's kind of absurd. So. So when they, so if you are a programmer, okay, you have to be aware of this situation. You you have to be aware. Don't, you know, don't fall for the pop. Like you you are being, you know, you are just falling for some nonsense. Okay. Now category theory is a real thing, but 
But before you actually find category theory useful, okay, as a programmer, you know, you might think you you probably thinking you should I be, should I should I learn category theory? You know, I heard it's you know it's one of the foundation of math and it's so powerful. Um, you know, so should I learn it? Uh, my answer is mostly no. Well, yeah, you should. But before you learn that, you you should uh, take like two years to study <laughs> the basics of mathematics, such as uh, basic analysis, basic uh, abstract algebra. That's the two most basic requirements. So what is ab abstract algebra? It's you know you have things like field, rings, groups. You you might have heard of it. Now in analysis you have like uh you have infinite series you have infimum you have extremum you have a uh, concept of compact space you know uh, den dense of space continuity things like that and also topology and also complex analysis Th these are i mean i mean these are like the building blocks the fundamental like the lego blocks you you have to know that before you have a skyscraper okay Category is somewhere. It's somewhere out there. Okay, it's not. It's 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 a foundation. It's 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 rather advanced and it's rather. So I don't think so. For a programmer, if you are a programmer, you you are asking, you know, should you learn category theory? My answer is no, absolutely. Uh, you should study two years of. You, you you should spend at least okay let's not exaggerate okay i mean normally to be an undergraduate you study four years of uh, math okay the first years two years is like basics of calculus the second two the last two years is actual real math now that's if you go to a university but for a programmer i mean i suppose i assume you are a professional programmer and you never studied math in college you know, you you not you are not going to have four years to spend to study math. So a practical answer is you spend, you know, I would say one year. Okay, spend one hour a day for one year to learn some of the basic topics of math. Uh, there are okay. First of all, you really uh, okay about what which topic to study. Um, that actually kind of depends, but but. But basically, you you should know, you should know the basic basics of analysis and basics of abstract algebra. Okay. Once you actually understand those topics, for example, you can do homeworks. You know, answer uh, homeworks or questions about that. Then you understand the concept of math jargons and so on. Then it's up to you to study uh, category theory. Okay. But most likely, after you learn abstract algebra, you may you probably won't be interested in abstract theory anymore. I mean, in category theory anymore, because there are other things in math. You know, properly the uh, belongs to the logic branch of math, which category theory is part of it. The foundation, the foundation of math. Okay that you you uh you may want to go into instead of category theory that's my opinion okay now i don't know my category theory myself i try to learn it a few times and i get the gist of the context of the i don't like it uh as uh, uh, in in contrast to what i so category theory is one of the uh, what you may call a branch of uh, mathematical logic, okay, or, or rather a foundation of math, or rather related to proof systems, proof theory, okay. Now in that in that department, in that category, <laughs> in that branch, okay, there are kind of many other things. There are type theory, there are homotopy type theory, there are um, you know logic systems, you know proof theory, which. I'm I'm trying to learn today. I hope to learn in the next five years before I die. So anyway, so I wouldn't, I you know, category theory. I ha it's not on my plate. Okay, I it's it's not one of the things I plan to learn because you know I give myself five five more years before I actually can actually still do programming because I'm old. I'm fifty years old. 
So in the next five years, I will be lucky if I actually understand some of the other other things. And category theory is not on my plate. Uh, I would, for example, to be concrete, I would uh, be interested to understand uh, type theory and uh, homo in particular homotopy type theory. By the way, if you are wondering if you should learn that, that no, again, you should you you need to know the basic of math first before you actually really talk about these kind of things. Um, so let me show you again this uh, Xali math textbooks. So I have a collection of textbooks. I mentioned I, I talked about this topic in my uh, past videos a few times. So here is a collection of math books. So if you are a programmer and if you don't know math or you know some math depending on where you are, uh, basically you want to know here are the things you want to learn. Okay, You want to learn calculus you want to learn linear algebra. Uh, by the way, linear algebra is not 3D graphics, okay? Stupid programmers. It's not like matrix, matrices, okay? <laughs> the programmers think uh, linear algebra is 3D graphics. No, nah, not really. Well, not for professional mathematicians. Linear algebra, you have linear space, you have fields, you have modules. It's part, linear algebra is part of abstract algebra. So I have, well, basically I have collected a bunch of textbooks that, that are free. Uh, you can, you know, download and read uh, that teach you, um, you know, I've checked out, I've checked them out and I have verified the quality. So you can trust uh, the books I've picked. So this, you, uh, so these are th the things you want to learn. Calculus, linear algebra, real analysis, complex analysis, uh, abstract algebra uh, up to this okay at least that's a minimum that's a minimum you you know y you need to know okay to actually say you understand some math before you can go into category theory or other things now uh, now topology is more advanced okay uh, and also logic you know <laughs> so there's this book logic you know, you can look look at this book logic. Okay, now if you want to talk about category theory, you gotta understand this first. Um, and this book, you know, it say there's a prerequisite. It says somewhere here. Uh, basically, uh, I forgot where it says. Basically, uh, I forgot where, maybe it's here in this book or elsewhere, but basically you have to understand, you have to have four years of uh, math major before you can read this book. But anyway, uh, so there are these topics. So so I'm suggesting, you know, if, if any of you programmers who want to really get into math, you must at least know real analysis and and uh, abstract algebra. These two things. These two are the the most basic, the the ABCs of math. Okay, you understand abstract algebra and real analysis. Now, now if you don't know, have no idea what these topics are, uh, just look up Wikipedia. Okay, let's uh, for example look up w Wikipedia. Yeah, Wikipedia, you can trust Wikipedia to give you a uh, good introduction of what this topic is about. But if you actually really uh, need, want to learn this subject, uh, you, sh you, you must uh, read a textbook instead of Wikipedia because Wikipedia has got lots of things. Some of them are actually uh, uh, at graduate level or research level, you know. You, you get confused if you go into Wikipedia because you know you don't know which is which. So anyway, that is my opinion about category theory. Yeah. Okay. So I hope you know. I you know sometimes when I give a talk my of my own opinion, sometimes I have. You know, I have the sense, you know, a lot of people call me a troll. So I have a sense, you know, sometimes, oh, Ksali is talking bullshit. No, it's not, you know. 
you, you, you uh, of course always you know judge for yourself you know you can ask mathematicians you know get, get out of the programming programmers community okay if you really want to know about these subjects you want to get in touch with the math community now by that you know like in programmers we are programmers right you know you know you hear about java javascript front end how things evolve how complicated is web frameworks you have opinions about libraries of versus framework about OOP versus functional programming about different languages you know you are, because you are in the community you know Don, who is donald Knuth, you know who is you know bill gates you know you know we know all this because we are in the community you know this programming community we know all, all about all these things and we know we understand what they are okay you have different methodologies you have agile you have uh, uh, functional programming you have programming languages you have new languages you know such as Haskell or camel or you know then you know because we are in a in this community we understand all these things and Emacs versus VI and so on now you have to imagine the math community do you know anything about it can you name let's say three mathematicians the top three mathematicians today can you name let, let, let's say three controversial topics in mathematics no you don't know nothing about it that's the point so you you need if you want to get serious answers or questions about math you need to get, get you know get yourself into the math community which is mostly mathematicians no programmers okay but well basically mostly professional mathematicians vast majority like 99.9 percent they are not programmers and they know nothing about program pro, programming okay they they they, they be uh they be hard pressed to to tell you what is a OOP, you know, and what is a function, you know. So society, we have all these different communities. You you need to, you know, it's it's the best for society if each of us all kind of know uh, different communities. Just like you know, each of it's better if we know about different country. We have lived in different countries for a couple of years, you know. Then things becomes better because we have we actually know stuff we have communication otherwise you know if you are a programmer you just hear about these programming programmers talking about math or oh, category theory or oh, graph theory or oh, linear algebra or oh, quaternions is about computer graphics it's all it's all bullshit you go into the mathematicians you hear nothing about it I can give you an example okay uh, I talked about this in previous videos as well like uh, math overflow math uh, wait uh, math overflow okay math overflow is like stack overflow but but it's focused for it's used by professional mathematicians okay remember it's not just a, a, a place questions answers for math no it's questions and answers for people who work as uh, mathematicians as a, a profession meaning that they they their daily lives they are either professors or they are research mathematicians this website math overflow is used by professional mathematicians okay now look at the site you know take take 10 minutes to, to look at the, the website you will find that nothing you understand n not one topic you have no have one sense of idea what they are talking about this is mathematics now you 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 know this is not your from the programming then you go to the you know stack overflow you search for math then you see a bunch of math that's programmers talking about math it's entirely different you know it's entirely different so that's that's what i mean by you want to get into the community to actually understand uh, so if you have a question about category theory you know should we should we learn category theory go into the math community you know uh, and get opinions from them then you start to see things okay um, in fact you cannot post that question to math overflow because your question is too stupid you know you get kicked out right away um, so anyway uh, so hello base hey good morning base happy friday 
uh, so what, what's up you, with you guys? I think I guess that's it for today. Um, three person watching. Okay, so <laughs> so that's it for today. Uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Uh, let's see what else I uh, want to talk about. Uh, uh, Real Analysis. This is a great book. I'm still reading it. I got this book like 20 years ago, but uh, yeah, I'm still reading it. But you can see, re you can see the pictures there. The pictures on the cover that's showing that that is actually a Mobius transformation, and you can see the sphere. Uh, that is the Raymond sphere. The topics we just mentioned, uh, for example, uh, the Mobius transformation. Uh, whoops. Uh, let's go down a little bit. Let's see some pictures. But anyway, um, and stereographic projection. Yeah, but anyway, I was going to talk about the math. I mean, giving you a tutorial about this, but uh, maybe next day. So um, thank you guys for watching. That's it for today. Goodbye. Have a good Friday.